Hello, everybody. You know each week we like to have fun on motoring, and I hate to be serious this week, but you know what they say about this life. There are only two things we can be certain of, death and taxes. And we all know where our tax money goes. As for the big D, it's a matter of opinion. But this week on motoring, we're going to meet some men and women who, if you so choose, will be more than happy to take you on your final ride. What we're seeing here today is the 24th International Meet of the Professional Car Society. Now, to some people, they may not have heard that term before. Basically, the Professional Car Society is a preservation of uh, what we call professional chassis vehicles, and they can range from uh, horse-drawn hearses to pre- and post-war automotive hearses, low- and high-top ambulances, uh, limousines, and flower cars. A professional car loosely defined as any type of car that has been built on an extended car chassis for the service industry. Real ambulances aren't trucks and the vehicles they use today are nothing uh, more than a, a box put on a truck chassis. Uh, a person with a back injury, they're just bouncing over every bump. Whereas in the days of a professional chassis ambulance, whether it be built on a Cadillac, Pontiac or Oldsmobile chassis, and extended. These cars, for the most part, the suspension uh, in a lot of the cars was air ride. So if you went over a bump, the car took the ride, not the bump and not the patient. This is a 1919 REO Speedwagon hearse. It was first used in Bertie Township in the fall of 1918. It was used to replace the horse-drawn hearse that I have in existence at my own place now. It uh, was converted it was bought as a chassis and converted by the Finch Coach Company into a hearse in 1918. It was used as a horse drawn or as a hearse for 15 years and then it was converted into a pickup truck for delivering furniture. I bought it in 1995 sight unseen from an estate and then searched for two years finding parts and then converted it back into a hearse. It took me three years in total the project. Isn't there a band called REO Speedwagon? REO Speedwagon was named after the car. The engine is the original engine. I had it rebuilt. Uh, my friend Don Belfry across the street uh, rebuilt the engine for me in 1998. We uh, obviously had some time getting parts for it because this, the uh, parts department at REO was closed. But uh, he found out through friends of his that the um, valves from a 1955 Massey Ferguson tractor would also fit a 1919 Rio. And that's why when we started it sounds more like a tractor than a car. It's a four-cylinder engine. I believe it's a 25 horsepower. This is the original registration plate for this vehicle. If you really read it closely, you'll see that it says over speeding, over loading or the use of solid tires will void the warranty. And two lines below that, it'll say that uh, maximum speed is 22 miles per hour. I've never gone over 22 miles an hour because I really didn't want to void the warranty. I don't think about what it was used for. I really enjoy the look of the vehicle and the local history surrounded by it. People like to look at these things. They're fascinated by, by the lights. Uh, one of my vehicles, which is a 71 uh, SNS Medic Mark I high top ambulance, which was originally in service in Myerstown, Pennsylvania until 1988, has 24 red lights and four sirens on it. Extremely impressive looking car. And when people see that uh, and they see the color scheme, they're immediately attracted to it. And, and if they can be convinced that uh, this ambulance has probably saved a lot more lives and carried people to a hospital and it served a useful purpose, then they begin to break down those barriers of fear and, and appreciate them for what they were originally built for. Uh, well, although the judges will be selecting their favorite vehicle here at the International Meet of the Professional Car Society in Kingston, Ontario, we've already picked ours and this is it. 1959 Cadillac Superior the last year of those beautiful tail fins when a Cadillac needed no nameplate. And they tell me this car had more chrome on it than any other production vehicle. Under the hood, a four barrel 390 V8, 300 
25 horsepower. Well, unlike the hearses, it can be operated no matter what the vintage. 1979 was the last year an ambulance could be built on a car chassis. So hats off to the men and women here who are keeping the memories alive and showing the younger generation that an ambulance and even a hearse can be cool. That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and people who drive them. If you consider Motoring TV has been on the air for 30 plus years, there's no doubt you've missed a few episodes. Well, there's a couple of ways you can catch up and make sure you don't miss anything. First, you can go to YouTube and look up just segments or complete shows. Also, if you want to know what we're doing like today on a daily basis, just go to our Facebook page. And also, you can go to MotoringTVShop.com and get some cool swag. Oh, there's also that Instagram thing.